music for Egypt. Nile FM. It is Zainab here with you on Good Vibes Only. And I'm not alone in the Nile FM studio. With me in on Good Vibes Only for today is someone I've been looking forward to coming in for a chat for a really long time now. With an impressive resume of award-winning commercial directing under his belt, he has finally made his long-awaited film debut. Having written, produced and directed his dream project, he's been a really busy, busy man. Travelling around the Middle East, premiering his movie, and which has, by the way, been selected as each Egypt's submission for the Best International Film Feature at the upcoming Academy Awards. We are going to be talking about his journey as a filmmaker. With me in the Nile FM studio is writer, producer and director of Voy Voy Voy, Omar Hillel. Hello, Omar. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be here. I've wanted you uh, to... to come to the to the show for quite a while now it's been what a, a few months and i've been it's just been like mission impossible to to be able to <laughs> get you over here you've been a busy man it's it's been very busy surprisingly I'm, i've got to say i did not expect it to be that quick yeah this sort of uh giant exposure that's going on but um i'm i'm, I'm feeling blessed yeah uh, you know it, it it, nobody really wrote this uh, that this would be that quick. Yeah, you, you just did not see this no. uh, this amount. Of, well, you know what? I, I congrats are are definitely in order, and we are going to be talking about this amazing movie that has just reached so much success in such a short. Yeah. amount of time if you really think about it it's really impressive how quickly you know people have clocked onto it and how much how much people are kind of like raving about it and everything like that but i do want to introduce everyone to who you are a right. little bit you know sure. the man behind it all and i think a lot of people sometimes can go through this idea when when someone makes a movie and they haven't heard of their name as a movie director before they they assume that that's the first thing that they've done right when in fact you have a remarkable remarkable decades. resume yeah decades and <laughs> decades of experience within yeah. the industry what i want to know is i do know that you wanted to be in the filmmaking industry from a very young age yeah. but there's always a moment where there's like yeah this is what i want to do what was it for Th you there was a moment of, yeah it's funny that you should say there was a, there was one particular moment uh, we were in Paris, my uh, mother and I and uh, my brother, and um, this was in when I was twelve and some. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> we were—I was taking a picture of them under Turifel, and I kept saying, "Mommy, uh, go come now." Uh, I was tilting up, down, blah, blah, blah. And then I just said, I took the picture and I said to my mother, "I said, Mom, I think I know what I want to do." I want to tell stories with pictures. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had it defined in my head. I, not just it's take very pictures, impressive, you know, as a child to be like, I want to take stories with pictures. Yeah. It wasn't just left off as that. Very, yeah. very specific. It was. It was said. very specific. And 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 I go and spend my summers in England, and and I went and bought some books. And one of the things that I also bought mm -hmm. uh, about filmmaking was was a magazine of Empire Magazine. I'm sure everybody knows Empire yeah. Magazine. And I read that issue. Of and I still remember the cover. On the cover was Dick Tracy, the film Madonna and Warren Beatty. I still remember the oh, cover. Oh wow! Okay. And I must have read that issue, I don't know, fifty times. Everything, every single review, every single advert, because I was I used to live in Saudi Arabia. You see, so there were no cinemas. Yeah. But there was the video club. Okay. So I would watch films mm. on on tape, but there was no immediate source to 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 consume. You know, to to grow this love for cinema or this desire to be a filmmaker. So I'd read the same magazines and the same books on and on and on and again. Mm -hmm. And and it just I knew from then that that's what I wanted to do. I started I found out that there's such a job called the director. Yeah. And I knew that that's what I wanted. That's do. what you wanted to do. All yeah. right. Having said that, you then moved into uh, you you double majored in journalism and media. Did is it me or does it feel like you kind of veered off or did you feel no. like that? I that tell you what happened. I tell you what happened. Well, I wanted to do film school. Yeah. I, I, I was going on my way to try and go to Toronto's film school. Mm. But Gulf War happened. Okay. We used to live in the Gulf, right? Ah, we used to right, live in yeah. Saudi. So my brother was in AUC and, 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 and the schools were stopped there. So I used to go to AUC just to hang out. So I'd yeah. go and hang out on the platform for hours every day for three months. So I made 
tens of friends. Yeah. And and they were very disappointed when they found out I was only 14 or 15. <laughs> 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 well, were you one of those where you looked older than, I looked you, older. than you were? Yeah. Right, all right. That yeah, when we, when we used to go to Atlas, they'd allow me, but not my friends. <laughs> um, and, and, um, and then, uh, so when it was time for college, yeah. I thought, Khalas, you know, I'll just go to, I'll study advertising like my brother's studying advertising. Mm. And I got into AUC and, uh, and, it, and it continued that way. But I, my passion for film continued. So I created the first, mm. I was the first minor of film in the history of AUC. This, there was no minor of film, yeah. but I created one All right. by taking certain courses. And, and, and my professor at the time, her name was Maureen Kernan, and she was fantastic. And, and she helped me make a minor. Oh, brilliant. So I had a minor in photography and a minor in film and my major uh, in, in uh, media and uh, mass comm. You ended up in Italy after that or yeah. somewhere during this. Yeah. And you end up somehow directing a television show whilst you're at uni. How did this happen? No, not while I was in uni. While I was in uni, I was shooting for various newspapers and magazines. Okay. As a photographer. All right. Was this after uni then? Like straight no, off the... Yeah. The, uh, Italy was right after your uh, university. Okay. Yeah. I was with ART Television. Okay. Cool. I was I was a director of the sports news and the top 20 for the for the music channel he's saying this right now with a really big smile on his face <laughs> i could see the, the, the little moment of like pride there yeah i was one of those <laughs> well yeah no i mean it was it was nice uh but it, to, to be quite honest um it was a recorded show so yeah. it wasn't challenging but it was the first kind of like you dipping your fingers in yeah. into it all yeah. right uh but when we went live oh my god it was panic Panic. Panic, because I, I I was the director of the sports news, so it was supposed to be live. <laughs> so whenever I could, I'd be yeah. like, can we record the news? They'd be like, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, get in there, you know? <laughs> well, we're going to talk about how you went into advertising afterwards. Yeah. But first, we're going to head back to some more music. I've got sure. Beverly Knight coming up next with Get Up. Hit music for Egypt. Nile FM. Omar. Yeah. A little earlier on, I quizzed you a little bit about, you know, the early phase, you know, and you did tell me, you know, you, you knew that filmmaking was exactly what you wanted to do at the age of 12. You were in Paris with your mom. And that's when you had your moment when you realized yeah. that you wanted to tell people's stories through pictures. Yeah. And then you went on to major in journalism media and then ended up in, in Italy for a little bit, yeah. you know, doing a live TV show. Yeah. And then somehow, along the lines, you went into advertising. Care to tell me what was that about? Well, um, was that like an intentional shift? Is basically well, what I I'm... studied advertising. Okay, I studied, and I adore advertising. I still do. I'm, I'm not very happy about how it is today in the world for advertising. It's changed, but I I grew I grew up every summer. I used to go to the UK. Mm -hmm. My grand my grandmother lives there, and watching. English advertising in the cinema or on TV is just, it's the best. It's something else. It's the yeah. best advertising in the world. It's so smart. It, you, you love the craft of selling, uh, you know, that they're doing. You, you want to do it. Uh, whether from a cinematic aspect, because there were the, the, the ones, the, you know, at the time there was TV advertising and there was cinema advertising. And the mm. cinema ads were destined for the big screen and they had big productions in them. They were awesome. You know, the stuff that Michel Gondry or, or, or um, uh, Jonathan Glazer and Tony Kay, these are legends of, of commercial, uh, commercial uh, directing. Mm. And they made some incredible ads. And I wanted, to be, I wanted to do that. But in reality, what I really wanted was constantly to direct. So advertising was a diversion. Okay. But a long one. Uh, so what happened is I came back from Italy watching the World Cup in a bar with my friend and I ended up sitting next to the uh, managing director of Le Burnet. Okay. His name was John Trabolsi. And uh, Shout out to you, John. Yeah, <laughs> love him. Great man. And uh, and we were, we were both supporting France and he's a big French uh, supporter. And, uh, and, you know, we started talking and I said, yeah, well, I'm directing. He goes, well, why don't you come over as a producer mm -hmm. into the agency? So I joined the agency, but I said, but listen, man, I mean, I'm a photographer and a director and stuff, but maybe you can call me creative producer. 
Okay. Which is a title that doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. <laughs> I was about to say, I mean, I know creative director, yeah. but creative producer, yeah. that's he a different... Goes, yeah. All right, I'll give you that title. Whatever. <laughs> so I became creative producer at the agency and, and, and I, uh, I, I can write. Yeah. I didn't know at the time, but I can write. Um, I so, can write me some stuff. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I would help the creatives yeah. uh, writing the stuff they're, they're writing. Uh, I, I graduated from uh, our... our most the majority of my schooling in Saudi Arabia was in Arabic schools, not English schools. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew a third of the Quran by heart and stuff like that. Yeah. So my Arabic is good. Okay, well that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. So I I was writing for them as well as giving them hints and or or ideas about how to shoot something or you know the we can put the per plus bottle like that and wipe like that and then uh, see uh, that's where the creative part producer came in yeah <laughs> yeah and and then i uh, uh, on one meeting four months later in burnett there was bishara muzannar who was the regional uh, uh creative director and mm -hmm. and he has a very poker face and i said you know bishara can i just tell you two ideas i've got one for lg televisions and one for tang i said can I tell you those ideas? And he, we were out to, alone, you know, and I yeah. told him the ideas and he goes, what are you doing as a producer? You're a writer. No. You're a creative. From tomorrow, you're going to be a copywriter. So I became a copywriter and producer, no more creative producer. Okay, <laughs> there was no more creative producer yeah. because literally that was just made yeah. up <laughs> for yeah. me, but yeah. then you went into copywriting. Yeah, and I became a writer until I ended up being an associate creative director in Burnett's. I went to Saudi and they asked me to go and handle the Saudi market because I was doing very well on uh, communication. I had won, I was part of the team that won uh, Click for Leo Burnett and then mm. um, Mobinil, yeah. which was a massive pitch. Yeah. Uh, won, won the pitch for the uh, company and then they took me to Saudi. Okay. But at the time I felt like, you know, I really want to pursue directing. Now this was five years in. Yeah. So I left Saudi, came back and I decided I'm going to be a director, not a writer anymore. Interesting. Well, we're going to talk about that in a short while. But first, we're going to head back to the music. you got Nelly Furtado coming up next with Try. Yeah. Music for Egypt. Nile FM. You were a creative producer, which is something that doesn't exist. Yes. <laughs> The bizarre creative producer. It was yeah. created just for you. Yeah. And I'm noticing a pattern, can I just say, because... Please. At uni, you created a minor, yeah. <laughs> okay, and then in the you know, and then you end up going into advertising, and then you you know you get creative producer, which is another thing that you create right there. Yeah. And then when was it that you went from you know the copywriting part to actually directing? That ads? was that was in two thousand and two. Two thousand and two. Yeah, that's when I decided I'm going to uh, leave writing. Yeah. And become a director. And it was hard. There were days I, I was without a job for uh, everybody in Egypt at the time knew who I was as a creative. Yeah. And some wanted to partner with me to create an agency 50 50. I said, no, I'm a director now. Yeah. I don't want to do this. But there were days, I swear, I would go down on my knees. I need yeah. a job. I need I, a job right now. <laughs> yeah. I need to get this thing going. And then something happened. Uh, I, I met a friend of mine. And uh, she said, uh, you know, uh, Simon Asmar is doing a show called Studio Al Fen, mm -hmm. and he needs to do a promo. And I met him, and we were out somewhere, and I met him, and he was like, immediately, he's like, yeah, come. And I said, can I direct it as well? Mm -hmm. And he goes, yeah, direct it. And, and the first commercial I did was shot in Lebanon with um, uh, Walid Tawfiq, Wael Kafouri, and Nawal Al Zoghbi. Okay. So it was a big commercial. Yeah. And it aired in Ramadan of. 2002 okay and it had my name on it you know like the way that you know was it in big writing or no you, little no. writing, <laughs> little I put writing it but corner. it was there yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. but that, that that never happens i mean ever since that day yeah. i've directed hundreds if not near a thousand commercials and your name is never mentioned true because directors don't have their names you know the agencies put their names yeah but yeah, so that happened, and then uh, you know, I got I basically just it, it rolled in from there. Well, you managed to create a very comfortable, uh, successful um, career when it comes to commercial advert, uh, yeah. commercial directing. Direct. Yeah. Ugh, I'm getting tongue twisted there. <laughs> All right, let me try and put this in a way that makes sense. Okay, because it's making sense in my head. Okay. But let's see, right? When when someone, you know, is successful at something, 
you know, and it you you kind of feel like you know I'm I'm at the top of my game in this particular niche. It can get really comfortable, and when it gets really comfortable, that becomes your comfortable comfortable zone. It can become a little bit daunting to step out of that comfort zone because now it's not like you've got nothing to lose. Now you're risking something. Yeah. Was there a point that you felt that you were afraid to risk that and take on something new? No. No? No, because my, my intention was always to get to the point of directing. So when I left mm. writing, I knew that, I, I mean, you know, I mean, I had offers on the table. I, I dropped them all because I'm going to direct and I think I'm going to do well at it. Mm. And, 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 you know, it, pretty quickly we st I started doing ads that, you know, people liked. And that, uh, to be quite honest... That, did was, that give you the confident, yeah. confidence boost that you needed? <sighs> that you were like, okay, I've got this. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, l listen, we were part of... An, uh, I was part of a generation at the agency that really revolutionized the, the craft, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I was part of a, a bunch of people. Uh, uh, one of them was my good friend when, since we were in college, Muhammad Hamdallah. Mm -hmm. and, and he and I, with the help of a fantastic crew of people, Amr Darwish, Christine Gabriel, and Muhammad Yusri, we li literally lifted the agency, the, the creativity into another level. So when I left it at 2002, mm -hmm. um, I left it, you know, Labor Net was booming. Yeah. You know, so I started getting some of that work and working with it. And FP7 was, you know, getting in its stride and JWT was getting in its stride. And we st the good ideas started coming. Then more creatives, v excellent creatives started coming in from other places. Ali Ali, Megid Nassar, <clears throat> you know, all of these people mm. started giving ideas. And once you collaborate with top talent, yeah, the ads are incredible. You know, so when I collaborated with with Hamdallah or with Ali or with Megid, we did great ads. The ads went and boom, won yeah. awards uh, like immediately. And we lifted the whole region, not just Egypt. We, the entire region followed. I think it's fair to say, yes, it did give you the confidence yeah. boost that one needed <laughs> yeah. to go ahead and move on to the next thing. Talking about the next thing, we're going to be talking about that in a little while. But first, we're going to head back to some more music right after this. <laughs> music for Egypt. Nile FM. Still in the Nile FM studio, still have my amazing guest director, Omar Hillel. And we are still talking about his journey. And Omar, you know for a fact, I'm not going to, like, I was going to try and play this cool on air, but I'm not going to even bother. You know I've been really excited about this next question coming up, right? <laughs> what is it? I'm not told you, but I've wanted to build up a little bit of suspense, hoping that, you know, uh, you're going to be really impressed by this. Okay. Okay, so... I am going to give your advertising expertise a little bit of a challenge. Okay. All right. A thing. I'm not even going to call it a challenge because it shouldn't really be a challenge. If you had to give the phase in your life where you were moving from commercial directing into movie directing a slogan, what would that slogan be? Um... <laughs> uh, yes. Don't, uh, you know that That's song? That's the reaction I wanted. Don't Stop Believing. You know that song? Yes, Journey? I do. Yes. Was it was it was it Freddie Mercury that No, one? no, no, stop. Journey. Don't, Don't stop, stop believing. Oh yeah, 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 that one. Yeah. It would be that. You know, I've been <laughs> my brother who's apparently you were so watching quick and at, listening. At figuring this one out. Uh, <laughs> I was waiting for like a pause, no. anything. That was so quick. I knew you were going to do this to me. Go on. No. Um when you know remember when when you used to put the big satellite dishes on top of our buildings? Yes. So you had to put those and cement you know, the, I don't know. If cement you, them down cement so they don't go anywhere. Yeah. But when when we were young, my brother and I were bored as hell and just went up with the guy while he's doing it. And I and I wrote down in the the cement. I said, I am the next Marty. Marty being Martin Scorsese. Okay. I love how you decided he was a buddy. Yeah. Marty. Marty. <laughs> I used to. I used to hold. I used to actually. Ah, I'm now laughing. We're watching this. I used to hold this little five pound Oscar that yeah. I bought from Soho. And I used to stand on the bed and you'd be <laughs> underneath me. And I'd be like, um, Al, that would be Al Pacino. <laughs> uh, and Bob, that's Robert De Niro. Okay. I'd like to thank you, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and Ahmed would Oh, laugh. you did your, your, th your I, thanking speech. I, I used speech. to do a speech yes. since I was like 15 or 16. So um, I never, I, going back to the question, yes, I always wanted to do this. I was never going to stop. 
until I did it. You know, I wrote a film in 2005. This isn't my first writing. Yeah. But it never got made. Okay. And I think... Why? Um, it was just not lucky. Okay. It was Fair not enough. lucky. Every studio that went that I went to wanted to do the film. Okay. Every studio. But it just... It just didn't, didn't happen. happen. It yeah. didn't happen. And I think for a good reason. So, you know, one thing that I've learned making this film mm. is that, you know, Arabi, al khira fi makhtarahu Allah. Just wait. Wait, yeah. It's going to happen. Don't push it. Fair enough. Yeah. You know, I mean, we were we were talking about the release of the film and I always wanted to release in the Guna Film Festival. Yeah, I don't want to go into that yeah. just yet because yeah. I want to talk about the fact that, you know, because I am, I, I do kind of feel like because you're someone that's worked in advertising and stuff, you didn't let certain things deter you. You used up time when, when, when things didn't go your way. And that is definitely something w that needs to be discussed. But first, yeah. we're going to head back to some more music. Okay. And then when we get back, we're going to be talking about everything Everything to do with voy, voy, voy. Up next, you got Sierra and Like a Boy. Music for Egypt. Nile FM. Now, can you tell us what voy, voy, voy is about? Yeah. Um, I, I, was, uh, I was leafing through Facebook and I found this piece of news that, uh, that had gone viral that day, uh, mm -hmm. which was uh, that a group of Egyptian men faked blindness to join the a team of blind footballers and who were going to compete in the world cup of the blind yeah in poland so they pretended to be blind <laughs> okay. to join only a, egyptians yeah <laughs> I, our unique uh, humor and creativity you know we, we built the pyramids and we can also do that you know we're very yeah. creative um so when I saw that piece of news, I said, that's the film I'm going to make. Yeah. It's got the unique mix of what being Egyptian is. It's very clever. It's very witty. And it's about survival. You know, uh, at the time we were reeling from, obviously, you know, uh, uh, political issues. issues. And, um, and uh, you know, uh, not everybody knew what the future holds most of us were scared did you always know that you wanted to write your own movie as well no. as direct it no, no. it no. wasn't something that you thought you were going to do you just thought i'm going to direct a movie one day yeah and i and i kept thinking is somebody ever going to call me to give me a script <laughs> it doesn't happen that way it doesn't happen that way uh you need to you need to actually now i'm getting lots of calls and and texts people trying to give me the scripts Mm. But um, I had to write mine. I, as I told you, I wrote one in 2005. That, that didn't, yeah. didn't get made, yeah. And then this. So when I saw that uh, piece of news, I started getting into the writing process, but it took four years to finish. Okay, well, the movie got submitted as Egypt's official submission uh, for the Best International Film Feature at the Academy Awards. Yeah. When you were writing the script, did you have festivals and awards at the back of your mind whilst you were Look, writing. I, I, as I told you, I was holding that Oscar. I was at 12. Yeah, <laughs> so, but <laughs> years so, later, uh, though. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I did no. not. No. I mean, you know, you, whatever I do, and I think whatever anybody who likes what they do, do, you want to do it to, to reach Something. the best level that it is. And I think I got a little bit, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mixed blessing, but going back to advertising, so the first time I submitted something to a festival was uh, a campaign that I'd shot uh, uh, with my good friend Ali Ali, who, who had written something and I developed it. Uh, yeah. It was for a brand of soft drink. Yes. And, uh, I like how mindful you were. Yeah. There. Yeah. Go on. Um, and, and, and we developed this thing and the client didn't even want to accept it in the beginning, but we forced them to accept it. Mm. And it was a smash. And uh, we went and submitted it into this film, uh, into this advertising festival in Dubai, the Dubai Lynx. And, you know, I'm just there. There's a party, you know. And suddenly they announced that we've won the Grand Prix. Oh, wow. The highest award of the show. And I did not know. We screamed. I mean, I, I lost my voice going up to the stage. Came back, <laughs> I'd lost my voice. <laughs> okay. But it was a beautiful welcoming to the world of awards. Yeah. But a curse. Because if you don't win the Grand Prix the next year, it's like, ah, sh you know, I didn't win the game. Yeah. So I got kind of used to wanting that kind of level of... Success. Success. 
So writing a film, I know, writing a film, I was trying to make a film and yeah. I'm trying to make it the best that it can. Of course, have I got my eyes on awards? The prize, of yes. Of course I did. Yeah. But did I know that I could? You know, it's, it's different than writing it and then making it. Yeah. You know, I wrote and produced this film and directed it. So the three of them. You had to diff- juggle three very different roles. Extremely difficult. That's the, you know, I get asked the question quite often. So what was the most difficult thing about making the film? Writing. That was that, no. It no. was juggling those the, three those roles. Three. Because the producer in you has to commit to a certain, you know, budget, time, whatever. Yeah. And and the ri- director in you wants to do everything. You want to shoot that scene with three cameras and spend yeah. 12 hours And the writer it. in you doesn't want anything cut out. Absolutely. Exactly. So I was in a constant state of editing. I get it. Constantly. From writing till editing itself. Well, we're going to be talking about those challenges in a little while. But first, we're going to head back to the music right after this. Music for Egypt. Nile FM. Ahmad, you've got a lot of fans that have been sending in some really cool messages. You've got uh, Islam from Lutsur, who uh, just wanted to say thank you so much for coming on the show. And he's really enjoying uh, the conversation that we're having. And Mariana, now I read you the message because it's a long one, (laughs) but it's a really, really lovely message from Mariana. It was absolutely amazing to to hear her journey and how you inspired her to uh, follow her own dreams. Yes. How does that feel when someone sends you a message like that? Honestly, it's humbling. You know, I've, I've, thank you, Mariana. I mean, uh, I'd love to talk to you about what you want to talk about, and and others. I've got, I've received quite a bit of these, uh, you know, uh, very very humbling uh, messages where people are saying, you know, that you you gave us hope or, or you know you you encourage us to pursue our dreams and uh, and honestly, if. If anything, that's the biggest compliment that I can get. Yeah. You know, to to be uh, inspiration to some people, that would be uh, amazing. Well, we were talking a little bit earlier on about the challenges you faced while making Voy, Voy, Voy. Yeah. And you were saying, you know, one of the biggest challenges for you was, you know, being having to juggle, you know, being the Three writer, roles. being the producer, a co-producer and uh, being the director of this, because it's like it's this endless battle, because if you really think about it, those three positions let's put they them, fight they, each they, other they fight each other like on a normal set that's yeah. usually what yeah. happens you know the writers you know fighting with the director because the director needs to cut a scene out but the writer is really attached to the scene and the producer is just like you know what i yeah. need this to be done by this time yeah. because yeah. we're on a budget you know yeah. what i mean yeah. um but i i also know that you you did mention that you you were never really kind of like you, initially planning to write a film you never, you know, it wasn't, you know, you always knew you wanted to make a movie, but yeah. you didn't realize that you were going to have to sit down and write, write it. it yeah. And that must have been a challenge in itself before you got further down yeah. the line. You know, what was the most challenging thing whilst you were writing this? You know, it, it, I, so I wrote this f- previous film. Yeah. And it wasn't my intention to write it, but it was when a couple of writers tried writing it and I did not like yeah. what they were writing that I wrote the first one. Okay. And I knew that the process of writing and pitching mm. was hell. So when it came to the second one, when I have an idea, I called on my friend and incredible writer, Mariam Naoum, mm-hmm. whom we were together in Leo Burnett again. Everything starts at Leo Burnett. Yeah. And um, I said, Mariam, I've got this idea. Take it. Yeah. Now write the film. I don't want to bother about it. So she said, okay, let's meet. And we met over the course of two months and four meetings. Yeah. And every time we'd sit down, I would be like, I'd be talking, talking. And she just calmly listened to me and listened mm-hmm. to me. Listened. Writing her notes. No, she no, wasn't. No notes? Okay. And at the end of the fourth meeting, she goes, Omar, I've got news for you. You're going to write the film. I said, mm-hmm. why? She goes, listen, you've got it all in you. Use me in whichever way you want after you've written it. Mm-hmm. Come back to me. Share me with me the skeleton of the film. You know, the beat sheet, as they call it. Uh, uh, or share with me the script. Uh, you know, let me, see, let me see how you want to do anything and I'll help you. And what I did is actually I went back to her with the skeleton of the film. Yeah. So I had this big uh, board mm-hmm. where I was pinning a little uh, post-its. Mm. So I had a color for each character. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, the, the lead character, Hassan, he, his color was, for example, green. 
and I was making sure that you don't get too many greens what about. Oh, right, yeah. You know, you get a blue because that's the other character. You know, Bayumi's character is, uh, you know, yellow. So he co- has to yeah. come in. And I was looking at the arc of the film, you know, so I would have a scene that's empty here and it could be empty for months. Mm. And one day, you know, Eureka, I, I found it. Boom. You write it down. Boom, 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 boom. So I, when I completed this entire board, mm. I took that board and went to her house. And we met in a cafe in the compound she lives in. Yeah. And I said, Maryam, here it is. And I took her through it. And she goes, oh, she calls me Omar, not Omar. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she says, Omar, you know, I got goosebumps. This is fantastic. And I said, do you really think? She goes, I think it's perfect. Just go for it. Write it now. So I had already written some scenes, but yeah. now I was, it was fully fledged. When did you know that the script was ready? Like, that's it. This is done. When I finished it, literally, I took it to Hafzi. Yeah. Muhammad Hafzi, my, 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 the famous Muhammad Hafzi. And uh, we were in London, mm. Christmas. So I was visiting family. He was visiting. And, and I said, read this. And he said, you know what? I love it. Let's do it. I said, no changes? He goes, no, no, just love oh, it. Oh, that's perfect. No yeah. changes. And that's an, another part when you're saying difficulties was I had nobody telling me there was a problem. Yeah. So when Hevzi took the film to Image Nation, Image Nation took it to Vox, and these are the three partners. Yeah. Nobody ever told me a comment. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, you, you think it's brilliant, but you think, oh, they're just you being nice. You started worrying, didn't you? They're like... just being nice. There must be a problem. <laughs> uh, but there wasn't, apparently. And it went on. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk a little bit further about this. And uh, I've got a little question for you. It's, it's another one of those questions that I'm, I'm, I've got the grin on my face about because you know I'm hoping you're not going to see it coming but you probably are knowing you but anyway <laughs> Ellie Golding is up next with Anything Could Happen Music for Egypt Nile FM Ahmad I've been really excited about this question okay for a bit now now you were saying you know it was a challenging process writing the script yeah. it was but it wasn't kind of thing but here I have this just actual curiosity. I kind of, you know, I, I wrote for a little bit. I didn't write a movie. Don't right. get me wrong. Okay. Poetry and little things. I did try writing a few things. But what I've always noticed when someone writes, you have a visual right. of how things were. And you were talking about, you know, how you kind of visualized it by colors just to make sure that the script was running the right way that yeah. you needed it to, to, you know, uh, character A, character B, character C. Now, in this movie, you know, you've got um, Hamad Farag, Bayoumi Fouad, and Nili Karim. Yeah. All right, these are the characters that are. Taha the, Desu'i, Amgad Haggar, yeah. Yeah, all right. So when you were writing the script, were, did you have them? Did you ha- Were they what you imagined when you were writing the script? Were they the Not people all that you had them. in the roles? Not all of them. Are you going to tell us who? Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. No, but my main two characters were Farag and yeah. Nili. Okay. Oh, that was, that was the visual yes. that you always had? Well, to the degree that Nilly, uh, the character that she plays in the film is called Inji. Mm. But in the script that went to Nilly, it was Nilly. Okay. I was writing it as Nilly. Oh, wow. That's how... Instead of her character name. Instead of, it was just Nilly. And then once Nilly said yes, uh, you know, and I'll take the opportunity to say thank you, Nilly, because when she said yes, the film got another boost yeah. in production. Be- so it's- Yeah, because of her star power. Oh, brilliant. But I, I, see, I always wondered about that because I, what if you had someone else in mind and then you had to actually, which you did with certain characters? With certain characters for sure. But, but not the main characters. No. Farag wasn't yet the name that he is. Yeah. Then he did a few things, you know, culminating with Larbert Newton. That really Newton. stood out to yeah. you, yeah. With Larbert Newton. And he was like, you know, so I called Hevzi. I said, now it's the time to get him. Mm-hmm. And he said, yes. And uh, yeah, we got it. Well, the movie premiere it got pushed back quite a bit. And, you know, with my experience, you know, because I, I do know a few people in the field, when when something like that happens, what I'm used to seeing is the director going, I can't, but, you know, there's drama, a lot of drama, a lot of stress, a lot of tension. But what I found really interesting with you is that you made use of that time. Yes. Uh, and I kind of feel like that's where, where, where the advertising part of you came in. Where you're like, okay, so we've got more time on our hands right now. Okay, we're supposed to premiere on this day, but you know what? Now that we can't, you know what? Let's bring Wigs on board. Yeah. Do you want to tell me how that yeah. unfolded? 
Well, well, we always wanted to. I mean, it's, you know, making movies in Egypt, you always want to have ornate the film. You know, yeah. You know, the song mm. of, of the movie. Yeah. And we didn't have one, and we had one which is at the end of the film mm. by the Who. Okay. Uh, and but that was a very expensive song. Okay. And a misunderstanding actually led to us getting wigs. Hevzi kept saying, "Let's make a song." I thought Hevzi was saying, "Let's make a song for the film." Okay. While he meant, let's make a song instead of Baba O'Reilly by The Who. Okay. So in one track, I'm calling people. I'm trying to get... Which song was that? Sorry? Uh, the, the song Baba O'Reilly by okay. The Who. I'm going to see if I've yeah, got that here somewhere. Yeah, you try to look for it. But go on. Yeah. Um, so um, I'm talking to people. I'm trying to reach Pete Townsend himself via friends in London. And we actually got to Pete Townsend himself. Uh, to get the song, but the song was very expensive. Anyway, okay. At the same time, Hevzi started talking to Wiggs, so we showed Wiggs' uh, uh, people the film, mm-hmm. Awesome uh, Tag, and Awesome cried and laughed and applauded and loved the film. Okay. And he said, "I'm going to sh- share it with Ahmed Wiggs." And apparently, Wiggs sends a message. He goes, "The film is rahib and he loves <laughs> it's it." Brilliant. And, yeah, he says, "He says I've watched it three times. I want to write a song for the film." Oh wow. And and then we met him, but oh. he said, you know, I've got this other track that was not released before. Why don't we use it? And I loved it. And that's how you went ahead. And that's how we, we you know, and he's fantastic, very generous. And it generated a lot of, like, a lot of people, w- w- it was trending. A lot of people were checking that. It was that, number one. Yeah, yeah. For, for quite a bit there. And I think yeah. it got people more curious about the movie itself. Yeah. All right, we've got Take That coming up. And when we get back, we're going to talk a little bit more. I can't believe this. We've only got one more link left and time has gone by super quickly. But uh, I do still have a couple of more questions for you before I let you go. Here's Take That and Windows. Music for Egypt. Nile FM. Sad, How quickly did true. the time go? <laughs> yeah, very quick, right? Yeah, it really, d- it really, d- it really did. Now we uh, we're talking about the fact that you know you did bring on w- Wigs yeah. to do a song for the movie, and uh, you know th- that w- that trended all over. Yeah. Really, I mean. I think I've personally watched the video clip of that song like two, three times because yeah. I, was, I was a bit obsessed. I was like, oh, this is good. I'm liking this. Yeah. And it gives you a nice little kind of feel yeah. in, uh, into the movie because you've got, you know, little snippets of the movie itself and then wigs flying, flying. <laughs> you know, flying and yeah. black and white. But right. it kind of gave the mood yeah. and it gave the mood of, you know, this movie's funny, yet there's some kind of dark moments drama. in it and there's drama and there, there, there's it's a really, really nice mix. Yeah. Now, what did you want the audience to, you know, to have as a takeaway from this movie when they were walking out of the cinema after they've watched it? Look, uh Honestly, I wanted one takeaway, but that's not necessarily all of it. You know, mm. I, I think that the film's uh, role is to tell stories, not necessarily leave you with something. Some films are just for you to observe, you know. Mm. Uh, I, th- I think a, a film that always comes to mind is La Grande Bellezza, but, uh, The Great Beauty, okay. uh, Sorrentino. Uh, you just watch it like a painting. It's, yeah. it's beautiful. And then it will leave you with a, a feeling of joy or wonder or, you know, um, you know, some films don't have to have a, a, a case or a daya. Be, yeah. you, know, you know, you just watch it. Here it was a story that's fascinating, mm. a true story that's fascinating. Um, but if there's one outtake that I left at the end of the film is that the grass is not necessarily greener on the other side. It never really is, is yeah, it? Yeah, you know, I think that people rush. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to go out and, and I'm going to live a better life. Not necessarily. I think that, and this is my personal um, experience. Th- experience is stick around, fight for it, mm-hmm. do your best, and no doubt it'll happen. If a young, Inshallah, yeah. if a young, I like the fact that you ended it on that note because this is what the next question that mm. I have for you is. You know, there's a lot of young people that are, you know, that aspire to become filmmakers. You know, you've got quite a few messages of people say, t- you know telling you how much you've been you've inspired them on their personal journey in, yeah. in in becoming part of the field what advice do you have for them um get in as early as possible okay and don't wait because i get a lot of people asking me and i i went with i don't know who for training i, I don't know don't you know now with mobile phones yeah you can make a movie 
on your phone. Yeah. Now. And you could edit it, edit it, it down and music, everything. Yeah. Grade it, the whole thing. If you want to do, I mean, when I started, when I was in AUC, we had this old clunky VHS that we yeah. were shooting stuff with. And to edit, it was like forever. Yeah. Forever to edit a minute. Uh, now you've got apps, you yeah. know, it's done. So there's no excuse for anybody who wants to be in the film business. You can, and you can do it very quickly because you can shoot something, put it online, and your and friends share it, and, you know. And see how everyone reacts. And I think, yeah. you know, now because of online, people you you get automatically the, the kind of feedback that you need to know what you need to change and, and what you need is, to do better. And there's immense amounts of talent, both in Egypt and in the Arab world, that just they just need to to work harder. Nobody should take an excuse of like you know life's taking me there and uh, stop do it. Well, Ahmad, it is an absolute pleasure Thank to you. have you today on the show. You know, if you haven't already seen Voy Voy Voy, I suggest you do. It's in the cinemas right now, and uh, I'm personally yeah heading down there this week well, myself. He's giving me that look, <laughs> but I really am. And uh, it wouldn't feel right if I didn't put this song uh, coming up next. This is actually in the movie. You were telling it's us about that. It's the, the finale hum. of the film. It's The Who and Baba O'Reilly. That is what's coming up next. Thank you, Ahmad. You make My sure pleasure. you have a fantastic day. Thank you, Zainab. Day. It's been a fantastic time. Would Thank love you. to have you back on on the next movie. Anytime. anytime. Ahmad, one last question, though. Yeah. What's next? Big, big uh, concept. Okay. But we haven't touched it yet. But I want to do something that is not just Egyptian. It's actually Arab and giant in size. Okay. Yeah. That's all you're giving me, right? That's I all. could see the look on your face. You're like, don't ask. Don't yeah. ask any further. Well, I'll take it. I'll take it for what yeah. it is. The Who is up next. And uh, yeah, you make sure you have a fantastic Thursday and weekend. I'll catch you again on Sunday.